This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. <laughs> A lot of strange things can happen to a country boy when he goes to visit the city. Especially when he's going there to look for a girl he doesn't even know. And young Ben Dooley found out that life can get pretty complicated away from the farm. I call this transcribed yarn, The Girl on 963. I suppose one place is as good as any when you have to begin something. So, I'll start the story that morning out there on the farm in Fayette County. Ben Dooley lived there with his Uncle Charlie. And between the two of them and the good prices, they'd cleared up the mortgage, bought a new tractor, and were getting ready to fix up the house. But to Ben's way of thinking, money wasn't enough. He didn't know when the idea first came to him, but it began that morning when his Uncle Charlie came back from town. Ben, Ben, why the heck ain't you got that North Field back? Hey. You sure took long enough. What you all dressed up for? I'll tell you about it all the way. Now, now hold on, Ben. You gotta hurry, Uncle Charlie. Uh, wait, will you? You coming? All right, all right. If I miss that 1150, I have to wait till tomorrow. What's got into you, anyhow? I'm gonna get married. Who, too? A girl, of course. What girl? Girl in the city. What girl you know in the city? I got her picture. Here. Oh, what's this? That's her. You better look what you give me. Because here's a page out of the mail order catalog. Yep. Her picture's on the other side. Where? Turn it over. What? Huh? See? There she is. Well, what's where you're driving? Uh, that's her. Yeah. Pretty. Well, they make more of the dress than they do of her. Well, that's because they're trying to sell the dress. Ben, I'm glad your pa and your ma ain't alive to see how dumb I raised you. I'm not dumb. You can't get wives out of a mail-order catalog. They got about everything else, but they don't have wives. Well, sure, I know that. Well, then, what's got into you? Now, give me back the picture. Oh, she's just some girl they got the pose in the dress, that's all. Well, sure, but she's going to get married with me. Oh, she is, huh? Yeah. Did she say so? Nope, but she will once you talk to her. I wrote her a letter. Oh, you wrote her a letter. Well, how do you know she got it? You don't even know what her name is. I sure as heck do. You write it to the girl in the green dress, I guess, on it page. Some do them, but I got it. First, I wrote to the mail order company, and they wrote back that they didn't have her name, but they gave me the dress of this company in the city that took the picture, saying she worked for them. Oh, so that's who you was writing to. Anyhow, the company in the city wrote back her name was Joy Lavi. So I wrote her a letter to the company. Joy Lavie. Mm-hmm. Who ever heard tell a name like that? Well, you need her, Uncle Charlie. You'll like her all right. Uh, how do you know you'll like her, Ben? Why, I can tell from that picture. I won't get the plowing done all by myself. Well, I'll double up as soon as I get back. Now, when's that going to be? As soon as I get married. People sometimes ain't like their pictures, Ben. Yes. You're sure, huh? Yeah. This sure ain't the way your pa went after my sister. Well, times have changed, that's all. Ben, you're as crazy as I a know two... what I'm doing, Uncle Charlie. I've got a right to marry who I want, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon you do. I have to step on it. I don't want to miss that train. <laughs> Good morning. Maybe I can help you? Why, yes, I guess you can. I'd like to see, uh, Joy Lavie. Who? Uh, Joy Lavie. She's a girl. Maybe so high she's got a... Oh, Joy! <laughs> well, she isn't here. Now, you sure? Of course I am. Well, uh, do you know where I can find her? I'm sorry, but we're not permitted to give out the dresses of our models. Well, see, I'm from out of town, and I don't know where to find her. I wish I could help you. Well, now, what am I going to do now? You are the only way I know how to reach her. Well, say, I'll tell you. I'll see if I can get someone who can help you. Well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Popover, there's a gentleman out here that... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, what he said. I must have had a bad night. Too early in the morning. Well, uh, maybe you Look, could... I'm sorry. There's nothing else I can do. Well, maybe if you ask uh, this fella, um, 
Mr. Uh, B-E-A-L. He wrote me. He said... Oh, yeah, Mr. Beal. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. Uh, Mr. Beal, there's a gentleman out here who wants to... Yeah, well, he says he has a letter from you, and I... Yeah, I know, but... Yes, sir. Mr. Beal will be right out. Well, thanks, you. Um, won't you sit down? Oh, no, thanks. I've been sitting most of the morning. It's only 9.30. Well, half the morning. Oh, I see. Half the morning. Uh, did you have a nice time down south? What? Well, you must have spent the whole winter in Florida with that tan and sunburn. <laughs> oh, for a minute, I couldn't figure out what made you say that. We don't often get rugged-looking specimens like you in here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, what's pleasure? Uh, well, I, uh, let's see. Well, 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 what do you want? Uh, this gentleman wanted to see you, Mr. Beale. Well, what is it? Why, uh, first, I won't thank you for writing me the letter and taking care of the one to join. What? What letter? Why, this one here you sent it to me. Oh, oh, my secretary must have sent it. Is that all you wanted? Well, no, sir. I wonder if you could tell me where I might find Joy. Who? Joy Lavie. Oh, Joy. Is that all he wanted? Yes, Mr. Bill. Well, then why bother me? Well, I thought you said that... Young man, we have a very strict rule about giving out the addresses of our model. Yes, sir, that's what she told and me. And we but don't break said... it, not for anyone. Well, I think... We never said... break the rule. Never, never, never. Well, see, I've come a long way. I would like and to... And you're think... just the reason why we have such a rule. Do you understand? And now, wait a minute. This is I... not a dating bureau. We have rules to protect our people from men like you. Now, look, you can talk to me. I know you're would... kind. You don't have to tell me. Now, you get out of here before I call the police and have you... You can't talk to nobody like that. I warned you. <laughs> and those fancy clothes. <laughs> hey, no! P put me down! Put me down! Help! Police! Police! I am asking you a decent oh. question. Strictly honorable. Put me down! Police! You've got no cause to talk to me Help. like that. You better put him down. He's fragile. But I just got him by the coat collar. You better put him down. All right. <coughs> Stop it! Please! You better go. Yeah, I reckon I better. Say, I get through work at six. What? I'll meet you. Um, well, I... I guess I better get going. <laughs> See you later, handsome. Ben walked out of the photographer's office in a kind of daze. His first experience with city folks hadn't been a very friendly one. And he was beginning to feel lonely for the farm and long to see a familiar face. But Ben's determination to find Joy Levy was stronger than his loneliness. He couldn't stop thinking about her as he walked down the city street toward his hotel. What? Why don't you look where you're going? Well, I guess I was thinking of something. I reckon everybody hates everybody here. There's Georgia, millions of folks, not one of them friendly enough to say good morning. What? Oh, it's a horse. A horse? Howdy, fella. My, you're sure pretty. Where's the fella that owns you, huh? <laughs> Say, that's a nice saddle you got. Boy, he sure trusts you, don't he? Let you stand here with no hobble or nothing. Hey, fella? Huh? Well, I reckon I was wrong. At least there's one fella's friendly, even if you can only neigh and snore. Yeah. Yeah. You must like horses. What? Huh? Oh. Why, yes. Yes, I do. To yours? Who? Oh. The horse. Oh, no, of course not. Well, it must be nice to own a horse as pretty as him. Hey, fella? <laughs> I had one once, but he wasn't quite as light. You did? Hi, boy. Well, now, look at that. He likes you, too. He always did. Except maybe when the owner gets back, he'll let us ride him round the corner. It's against the rules. Rules? He's a policeman, Tori. Police? Well, sure. See him, saddle blanket, P.D. Oh, yeah. Well, I... I better be going. I live right here. In the hotel? Well, just for the time being, so to speak. So do I. You do? Well, for the time being, so to speak. Well, then we're neighbors. <laughs> I can't get over them whirling doors. They're like a merry-go-round. You must be from out of town. Why, yes. How do you know? <laughs> I just guess. Say, you're pretty smart. Well, I... I guess I... 
Well, goodbye. Goodbye, man. Uh, no, wait. Yes? Say, uh, could I talk with you? Well, I'd better go. I have No, a just lot... for a minute, that's all. Come on, we can sit down over there. All right. It sure ought to be all right for a couple of neighbors to sit down and talk now, shouldn't it? I suppose so. Hey! Well, now I can rest these feet a bit. Well, what did you want to talk about? Well, uh, I'll tell you the truth. Yes. You're the first person in this city that has said a kind word to me, and I want to thank you. Well, you're welcome. I'm me. Say, what's your name? Joanne Chris. Well, now, that's a nice name. The one I was born with. Well, anyway, I, uh, I kind of felt I knew you the minute you asked me if I liked horses. Did you? Now, you won't believe me, do you? But it's the truth. I was just about to think that everybody in the city hates everybody else when you come along. I guess I must have had a lot in my mind speaking to a stranger. Well, now, back home, we always talk to strangers. Home? Yeah. And that's where I ought to be, back where it's nice and peaceful and folks are gentle with everybody else. That's not a bad idea. Well, as soon as I find my girl and get married, why, that's just what we're going to do. Oh, I see. We're going to get married and go back where I belong, not to... Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, yeah, as soon as we get married. Well, I, I think that's wonderful. I wish you all the happiness in the world. Why, thank you. Here. Well, what's this? Just a ring. You'll need a ring for your girl, won't you? Oh, that's your ring. Look, I won't need it anymore, and you don't have one, do you? Well, no, but I figured about... You take it. I can't just take it for nothing, man. You let me it's pay. It's not for nothing. You've given me an idea, and I'm paying for it. It's not much of a ring anyway. What idea? An idea what to do. Well, what's that? Here. Now, wait a minute. Look, I... I have to go. Now, please take it. I want you to have it. All right, if you want me to. And I do wish you all the happiness in the world. Yes, ma'am. Well, goodbye. Huh? Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, man. Ben didn't feel much like doing anything the next couple of days in the city. As much as he wanted to find Joy Levy, he didn't feel like going back to the photographer after what had happened. And then he kept thinking about the girl who liked horses. Ben asked at the hotel desk for her, but they said she didn't live there anymore. After Ben paid his hotel bill, he figured he couldn't stay around much longer for what they charged for just a place to sleep. His money wasn't going to stand too much of that. So, he had to try again. And the only place to try was back at the photographic company. Good morning. Can I help you? Oh, hello. Howdy. Say, I looked for you the other day, but you didn't show. Well, no, I, I reckon I didn't. Oh, well, if you don't go for me, you don't. What's that? Skip it. I suppose you're still looking for joy. Why, yes. Yes, I am. So are a lot of people, including our friends. Now, what friends, that? Mr. Beale. Who? The guy who yelled for the cops. Oh, him. Maybe I better talk to him and explain. I wouldn't advise it, chum. Now, why not? He was Joy's boyfriend, and now he's kind of upset. Well, I think I'd better talk to him and that. Boyfriend? Mark, how many times have I told you not to? Oh, oh, oh. Howdy. It's, it's you. Yes, sir. I come back to ask you about Joy. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Joy. But the lady here said that you was her boyfriend. Excuse me, will you? Excuse me. I, I think my telephone's ringing. Why, sure. Go right ahead. Well, of all the things... Sure got good ears, ain't he? I didn't hear no phone ring. There wasn't any. No? Oh, well, he'll soon find out. Boy, it's got me. I thought he'd still be after you. Well, now, that's nice. I'm kind of glad he ain't. I guess I was thinking wrong all the time. George, his girlfriend, huh? They were engaged. I wish I'd know that a couple of days ago. I kind of had the wrong idea all the way along. I thought Joy would get married to me. To you? Well, that's what I come for. I reckon Uncle Charlie was right. Folks may not be what they seem. Why, I wouldn't have had to do all that work with a knife if I'd have known. Knife? Sure, over at the hotel. I've been there since last time I was here. Had worked my knife for a bit, because 
Well, there was nothing else to do. Uh, yeah? Hey, where are you going? Well, uh, I think I say you stay right here, huh? Well, what's the matter, right? Well, I, uh, I guess my phone wasn't ringing after all. Why, that's all right. I reckon we all make mistakes one time or time. Oh, uh, don't go, Marge. Yes, I say, Mr. Beale. I'm, I'm the one who ought to go. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you go either, Mr. Uh, uh, Dooley. Van Dooley. Yes, yes. Uh, I guess I better go, sir. Go back where I belong and get my mind back no, on No, no, don't go. I sit down. Well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Beal. Stay here, Marge. I think I hear a phone ringing for Don't me. Don't feel sad. She just told me you and Joy are going to get married. Uh, we were. Say, what are you two so nervous about? <laughs> oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Well, as long as you, you and Joy... Oh, uh, there he is. That's him, Mr. Thompson. Don't try anything, mister. Hey. I got him, Mr. Beal. No, he now. did it. He did it. What's this? Just be still. You're not going anywhere. Hey, let go. I we... told you to stay put. Killer. Let go. Ah, you don't. Oh, now look. Stop that. Oh, you. <laughs> Ben finally gave up struggling and was taken down to headquarters. He could hardly believe what was happening to him. He'd come to the city to get married, and now he was being arrested without even knowing why. Yeah, that's the man, all right. He's the one. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what you said before. Isn't that what you wanted to know? No. Now, doggone it. Mr. Beale, have you ever seen this before? So what? This. Why, that's Joy's ring. That's the engagement ring I gave Joy. Yes. Where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? I'll let you know later. But did you find her? I've been so worried. I said I'd let you know later. Now, will you wait outside? Well, yes, I will. I certainly will. So that's Joy's ring, all right. Well, mister? Well, what? You had the ring on you when we brought you in. Why, sure I did. You heard what he said. I've just been thinking about that. And you know what? No, I don't. But I'll listen to where you say you got it. She gave it to me and... Well, hey, she was joy. She gave it to you. <laughs> is that what the fuss is all about? Why, well, I bet you figure I stole it. When did she give it to you? Why, well, just a couple days ago. When? When I, let's see, uh, day before yesterday. Yeah, that's when it was. And she gave you a $3,000 diamond ring. $3,000? You still want to stick to that story? $3,000. Do you? Why, sure I do. She gave it to me. And she was a complete stranger. Well, yes, almost. You find her and talk to her, she'll tell you. I wish I could, mister. But it just happens Joy Levy has been missing for almost a week. And we got a few ideas what might have happened to her. And one of them is you. I saw her just day before yesterday. I didn't even know she was who she was. She don't look like her picture. She ain't missing. And you find her. Now, that's what I've been trying to do. You're in a tough spot, mister. You might even be booked for murder. Murder? Hey, you want a lawyer? Anybody you want me to notify? Uh, you better get Uncle Charlie in Hopewell Junction. Yeah, you get Uncle Charlie. He'll tell you I didn't kill nobody. All I wanted to do was get married. Well, Dooley, how do you feel? I don't feel good at all. Well, I have some information for you. Well, I think I have some for you, too. First, I checked at the hotel where you were staying about the knife story. Yes, sir. Yeah, there was blood on the carpet, and it was human blood. Well, I told you, I cut myself whittling. I was so skittered up. Mm-hmm, I had a hard time believing that one, until I found the shavings down in the hotel disposal can. It was like I told you. And their registers show they did have a woman there answering the description you gave me. Come on. Where are we going? You're free. I am. That's what I said. Well... This way. Well, that means you think maybe Joanne did something to Joy Levy, huh? It can mean whatever you make it. Well, she didn't. No, sir. If you say so. Now, if you take my Uncle advice... Charlie! Well, come on. Don't just stand there. We've got to get back to the farm. Your uncle here was the boy who cleared you. He did? Yeah, I phoned him and he came on the next train. Well, now, how'd you do that, Uncle Charlie? Oh, never mind. Let's get over to the train station. 
can't stand this city much longer. But you was back in Hopewell Junction. You couldn't have... I did, and I don't want to have to do it again. Now, come on, let's get back to the farm. No telling who you'll get married to if we stay here any longer. Yeah. Maybe so. But how... I said I'll tell you when we get home. Now, come on. Oh, all right. But that Joanne, she sure did look... You coming... Yes, sir. Oh, seems like I've been gone a year. There's a farm. Yeah. What's the matter? Ain't you happy to come back? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so. City got you, huh? No, not the city. Well... Now, maybe we can finish the plowing. Yeah. Well, come on, get out. Get out. Well, now, you've got to tell me, Uncle Charlie, we're home. How'd you make the police let me loose? They ain't going to tell you nothing. She's getting dinner, more than likely. See? Come next day after you left. Don't look all like a picture. Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry if I got you into trouble in the city. I didn't know till Uncle Charlie got the phone call. Yeah. Well, if I'd known it was you, it would have been different. I mean, it was you who gave me the idea of coming about rest and peace in the country. I was tired of the city. I didn't want to marry Mr. Beale. I, I just wanted to get away. I had your letter, so I took a chance and I, I came. Well, I mean, I didn't know that you were the same person. You're I... Joy Levy? Uh huh. Why, you said it was Joanne Craig. Well, that's my real name. I used the other when I went to the city, and when I used to live on the farm, and when I was going back, I thought it ought to be plain Joanne again. You're birdier. You going to stay? It's a nice place. It's going to be a sight nicer. Come on, we'll tell Uncle Charlie. You don't have to. I heard every word. Now, will you come and get to that plowing? Yeah? Yeah, I reckon I will. It seems that within a few days, the story of Ben's adventure traveled all over Hopewell Junction. And the local citizens were pretty proud of Ben, putting one over on the city folks the way he did. So, the farmer got a wife after all. The girl on page 963 in the mail order catalog became Mrs. Julie. And even Uncle Charlie had to admit that Ben's method might have been unusual, but it certainly got results. Heard with me on this transcribed John Steele adventure where Ross Martin... Mary Ashworth, Mort Lawrence, and Adele Saul. And I'm Don Douglas. If you enjoy action and thrill, you're sure to find them by tuning this way next week when we again present John Steele, Adventurer. And remember, a country is known by its people. What people think of your country depends on you. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.